How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we are going to go over how to install your Zebra LP2824 thermal label printer with a Macintosh computer. Specifically it's going to be a Mac Pro running OS Mojave. I have not upgraded to Catalina. I don't see it being problematic with Catalina, but it might be. And if you have Catalina and you tried this and it works, please let me know about it in the comments. And with all of that being said, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions throughout the tutorial, hit me in the comments section and let's get right into it. First things first, you're going to need your printer, your Zebra. LP2824, even though this says WS8240 on the back, it is a 2824. The next thing you're going to need is a power supply. It's gonna be the power brick that has the barrel plug and usually the power supplies use this two prong connector. It gives you input power. You need 20 volts at 2 0.5 amps. However, this is a 24 volts at 1.75 amps. But if you're going to order a power supply for some reason, you want to make sure that it's marked 20 volts, at least 2.5 amps. The actual barrel size is 5.5 millimeters on the outside and then 2.5 on the inside and 12 millimeters long. This is a power supply for a LP2844, which delivers more power to the bigger printer, should work fine with this printer. And this is actually a power supply to a Dymo 400, should work fine with this printer as well. Next, you're going to need your USB type A to USB type A printer port. It looks like this. Usually they can be found at almost any thrift store or in a junk drawer at your house. If not, you can get them on Amazon for cheap. I will put a link to it in the description. For my specific computer, I'm going to use a USB type A to USB type C converter. Because my MacBook doesn't take USB type A, I use this little dongle to convert it. And I will also put a link to this in the description. Last but not least, you are going to need your label media. For this tutorial, I'm showing how to print the two by seven type shipping labels. You can use these for eBay, USPS domestic postage, or anything that integrates through pirate ship. This label is known as the Dymo 99019 or a 59 millimeter by 190 millimeter label. Even though it has the Dymo punch and the brother DK ticks, it still will work perfectly fine in your Zebra LP2824 because this printer uses some laser mechanisms to recognize the label length. It doesn't require any type of proprietary media. And I will put a link to these labels specifically in the description as well. You're going to want to load your labels into your Zebra LP2824 printer. The surface of the label is going to be facing up because the print head is on the top of the printer. Right here is the label size locking mechanism. A mechanical switch, you flick it up in order to have it in the unlocked position. Then you flick it down to have it in the locked position. And you're going to want to leave it unlocked. Make sure the core of the labels rests tightly in the spool mechanism. And then you're going to hit the lock. You're going to switch it down, put it in the locked position. There are little feed guides that you want to thread the label through before you close it down. USB cable goes in the back right here. USB converter, if you're using it, goes on top of the USB. The power supply goes right in there. Make sure the printer is in the off position before you plug everything in. That is the circle position. And then this goes into the wall. We can turn the printer on, power switch right here, and we should get a green light. You're going to want to press the feed button to see if your printer feeds exactly one label. As you can see, mine did feed one label. But if it does not, you're going to want to calibrate it. And depending on which specific model you have, it might not be exactly how I calibrate this right here, but I will go through the two main ways of calibration. The first is the printer is on, you hold this front button, wait for two flashes and release and it, it should go th th th, print out three labels and then a text label and that calibrates the printer with the sensors. The way I'm gonna be calibrating this printer specifically, I have to turn it off, 
hold the front button, I'm going to turn it on, it's going to blink red, I have to release on the second red blink, and it's going to put it into calibration mode. As you can see now, it's spitting out the labels kind of slowly, reading where they start, reading where they end. It's gonna go through three blank labels. I don't know if you can see all of that. And then it's gonna print some text on the fourth one. It does waste a couple of labels, but it's how the printer calibrates in order to know what media is loaded in there. Now that we know that the printer is out of dump and it is calibrated, we're going to get our Mac, plug it in, and I'll take you guys into the computer. So where you're gonna wanna go on a Mac is up here in the finder and type in printers and scanners. It's gonna hit your top hits, or you can go down here to system preferences, double click on printers and scanners, and it'll open up where you install the printer. So right here, we're gonna do what it says, click add to set up a printer. You're gonna hit plus. Your printer must be turned on, plugged in. Mine was not turned on, there it is. Pops up right here, Zebra LP2824. We're going to click on that. And now it's asking to choose a driver. We're going to select software, type in ZEB, and it'll come up with Zebra. All of these label printer uh, drivers, you're gonna hit pick EPL2, hit OK, hit add, and then it's going to install the printer. You got it right here. You're gonna to wanna to print something in two by seven format. So you can go on eBay. If you're doing this for postage, you're gonna go on eBay. Go to my eBay selling. If you have an order, pull up your order. If you don't have an order, go to orders, shipping labels, pick up your last shipping label, go to more actions, print another label. You're going to want to do this anyways because you have to change the settings in eBay in order for this to print in two by seven. So where it says eight and a half by 11 or four by six here, you're gonna hit change. You're gonna change it to two by seven, hit save. You're actually gonna to wanna to open one in preview. This is the sample label. And then you can go file print or hit command P. And then it opens this up with a different paper size that don't we don't really have. And all of the uh, paper sizes that the driver comes with are no good. So you're gonna to wanna to go to print system dialog right there. Paper size other, you're going to go to manage custom sizes. You're gonna hit plus sign. And here you're going to put 2.31 by height 7.5. This is telling the computer we're using 2.31 inches width by 7.5 height. And then the non-printable areas, we're gonna zero everything out there. And we're gonna call this so we don't get it confused. We can call it two by seven and then hit okay. Now the computer is gonna tell the printer this is what you're gonna print in two by seven format and we're going to hit print. The computer takes some time to send the print job to the printer. So bear with it for some seconds, but eventually it will print your sample label out. And that means that you pretty much have this thing installed. The rest of the tutorial, I'm just going to go over some settings. I wanna show you some settings within the print dialog itself. So I'm gonna go Command P again, and you're gonna to have to always, if you're printing from browser, you're going to have to go to print using system dialog right here, because Google Chrome does not pull in that two by seven. And then you'll have to print using system dialog again. Here you're going to want to click last used settings because that will save the settings from your previous use and it'll pull it up as two by seven. And where it says layout right here, you can drop down, go to printer features. And if you notice your printer is printing very light and you want to turn up the darkness, you can go to this drop down printer settings, darkness, you can turn your darkness up. I'm going to turn it up to 15 and you can turn your speed up or down. If you notice yours printing light, you might have to play with the settings a little bit. So I already showed you how to do it in eBay. I'm gonna show you how to do it in Pirate Ship now. And you're gonna wanna log into your Pirate Ship. Uh, go over here to settings, go to general settings, and then the label size drop down to two by seven. And then you're gonna go down here to hit save. If for some reason you don't have the two by seven option, 
Open up a chat bubble, ask them if they could help you with the two by seven option and they will activate it on your account. And then you can print everything from Pirate Ship in two by seven label, label format. So that whatever platform you want to print two by seven in, you will then be able to open your orders in Pirate Ship, purchase shipping and print a two by seven label format that way. Uh, if you ever wanna go back to four by six or eight and a half by 11 for a reason, you can just go back to your settings. And one last thing I want to show is a, another example label. On a Mac, for whatever reason, a driver on a Mac, look, it even pop, it popped up, last used settings, two by seven, everything looks good. For whatever reason, the driver on the Mac, the barcodes will seem a little bit fuzzy or pixelated. It is not you doing anything wrong. It's just that's how the communication works. Doesn't affect it from being able to scan. You can see it's a little bit fuzzy of a barcode. I have the uh, personal information kind of scratched out, but it does not affect it from being scanned at the post office. You should be good to go. I believe it's a driver issue and it really doesn't make a difference. The postage still scans. It's nothing really to worry about. That was the tutorial of how to set up a Zebra LP2824 on a Mac. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments section. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your time and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.